Welcome to episode 17 of Comics and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Chris. And I'm Lumpy. And this is the review show that reviews comics chronologically. Kind of. All right, going into Detective Comics number 41. It was released July 1940. It is 12 pages, and this one is called The Massive, The Masked Menace of the Boys' School. In my hard copy, it is called A Master of Murder. <laughs> Figure that one out. Uh, I think mine's more accurate. Yeah, I think so too. But this is this is the hard copy. Like I said, it's the uh, Batman Chronicles. I'm on volume two, and so a lot of my like my last one. You said something about Clayface. Mine said, "Beware of Clayface." Yeah, mine said the murders of Clayface, and right, mine so. still says nothing. Mine never <laughs> have a name for the comic at all. <laughs> well, mine don't have it on the cover. I have to go back to the index to see what the name of the. the yeah, comic I don't is. have an index on this. Okay, he probably does. He's just too lazy to go look. Yeah, he can't. Well, I. The only way to look is for me to literally just scroll all the way back to the beginning because I can't go to a certain page. Oh, uh, I'm yeah, sure there's all a, I'm sure there's a way to do it. I'm on so so. There's 417 pages to my book, <laughs> yeah, and I you can't don't keep going back. I can't go back. I've tried. This thing is not a very good app. Just so you know, Detective Comics is not a good app. I don't think it's called Detective Comics. DC. Okay, it's DC app. It's okay, DC app. <laughs> DC app. Okay? I mean, granted, that's they took the name from Detective Comics, right? But it's not called Detective Comics app. I, I guess I, technically I you could say that. Yeah, I guess technically you could say that. I, I mean, think it's I, a Detective <laughs> Comics app. Uh, okay, whatever you say. For me, right now, I'm in the 40s, and this is a Detective Comics app. Yeah, there was no apps in the 40s. Just so you say no. I have the app, and I'm reading books from the 40s, so it's a Detective <laughs> Comics app, and it's terrible. <laughs> anyway, the cover, Batman's jumping at some guy trying to stab Robin with a knife. Yeah. The guy's got, like, weird balding spots on his head, too. He looks like uh, the actor. What's his name? He was in that, uh, he's in all the gang movies. Uh, I can't oh, remember. I, I, I can't remember who he is. What his Ray name Liotta? Is. No, he's got the weird face and the smile. <laughs> he's no got idea. those I can't. teeth. He has yeah, he's two got eyes. two eyes. Yeah, he yeah. Has I hair. can't remember who it is. I can't. I can picture him in my head, but I can't remember anything he's in. And I can't. Uh, the, the one with the two hands. <laughs> <laughs> he actually that. looks like a Bugs Bunny guy to me, like somebody from like, one of the films. From he Bugs actually Bunny. looks like Bugs Bunny a little bit. Well, we got rid of those mugs. They make me laugh. <laughs> with his yeah, teeth and his eyes <laughs> that's gonna drive me nuts for a while and he also reminds me of an old time actor too I can't remember his name either yeah he reminds me yeah, like an older like horror movie actor right yeah I don't remember yeah. his name either but they're both <laughs> actors I can't remember for the life of me who they are or what they what they're in this is great for podcasts it is amazing. We have, we are, we've really set the bar high here, guys. <laughs> Our last episode pretty much was just blocked out by the storm. And, uh, and this one, we can't remember anybody's name. So. <laughs> he looks like that guy from the movies, from the gang. <laughs> oh, it's gonna pop. I, mean, I think he's in Adam Sandler movies, too. Oh, you, it looks like, um, I can't think of his name. Oh ben my god. Stiller? He was in Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> yeah, that's what what, about. yeah, that's what I'm thinking uh, of. Steve Buscemi? Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. There you go. You know, I never remember that guy's name. Every time I see him, I say, that's Ed and his dead mother, because he was in a movie called Ed <laughs> and was. his dead mother. Yeah, yes. he's just, that's where I remember him from. And, that, and he's in a million movies, and I always remember Ed and his dead mother. I love Steve Buscemi. He's yeah, he's just, cool. He's really good. That's he's his... in. He's Mister Pink, isn't he? Yeah, yes. he's in Reservoir Dogs too. Yeah, I, yes. couldn't, I couldn't remember a single movie. I couldn't remember anything. <laughs> I just remember gangster. He was a gangster in one thing, yes, and Boardwalk one Empire, movie. and Boardwalk Empire. And somehow I got it from you saying Adam Sandler movies, which he <laughs> doesn't star in those movies. No, he's but... just in them. <laughs> he's in a few though. <laughs> he is in a few. He's always a weird, like googly eyed guy or something. Oh, We're this putting is... lipstick on. That's funny. This is so bad. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I want what I want to know is in the, on this cover, it looks like it's it's sunset, but the full moon is out, or is that the sun? I don't know if it's the sun or the moon. And Batman, well, because the sky's red. Yeah, that's my. So point. I mean, 
I guess it's the sunset. I don't know. And Batman's doing like a swan dive off of something. I don't know where he's diving. Yeah, from. out of nowhere, because the, the silhouette of the, the city is like in the background, but it almost looks like it could be mountains and not really or a like city. Chi- or like China or something. Or right? yeah. it's like American. Or trees. Or the trees. Yeah. If they're real blocky and weird. I just know it says, here comes the Batman again. So what? I, if you look at Batman from a different perspective, he looks like he's going to come up just short of tackling him. <laughs> he's going to yeah. miss. His he's hands fall behind him. aren't reaching. <laughs> oh, and then Robin's dead. The end. <laughs> so I just noticed, and it was on the last cover too, and it's probably been all the covers, but... It says Bob Kane in the corner of the comic. I just yeah. saw that, too. For some reason, it's real prominent this time. I guess because of its placement. And it, the color. It was yeah. on the last one, for sure. It, I know. I went back and checked. Yeah, it's white on the last one. It was pink I, on this one. Maybe it's it the pink. It might have been on the one before that. No, it's not on the one before that. Weird. Yeah. So Bob Kane was kind of a glory hog a bit. Anyway, Detective Comics is still 10 cents. But we open up outside of a school, I think. Yeah, I think it's a private school. Yes. I don't like these opening splash pages. Oh, it says Blake School for Boys. Because they kind of spoil things right in the beginning. Right. These the first Because it has nothing to do with the story. It's just kind of like a splash page of what's going to happen. And right. I don't really like them. It is a little foreshadowing. And if you're, you know, if you've read it before, it's going to make you remember, oh yeah, that's the one with the school. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, so this guy climbs over a fence with a knife in his hand. He's a homicidal maniac. He's escaping and he's already got a knife in his hand. <laughs> yep. So he escaped from the mental institution. It just says mental institution, right? From the insane asylum? Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah. Escape yeah. from a mental asylum. So I wonder if it's the Metropolis insane asylum, because that's the only one that's been established in the world yet. Did he walk all the way from Metropolis? Or is this school in Metropolis? Let's see where it says the locations are on this. It says Gotham City. So I mean, it always says Gotham City. Yeah, it just says Gotham City most of the time. <laughs> anyway, this guy climbs over the fence, and then we have a dead janitor. I wonder who did that. I don't know. It could be a mystery. And then, <laughs> and then it goes from the guy over the fence, dead janitor. Then we're in a boy's bedroom, and he says, "Yeah, or you? What do you want, yeah. you?" And then in the paper the next day, Robin's reading that a boy's been missing and a janitor was killed. Yeah. Now this during this uh, comic book, it gets a little weird with the bubbles, like. I always read right to left. I mean, left to right. Yeah, I read right to left. I always read left to right. But if the you bubbles, read right to left. If the bubbles above it, sometimes it's ahead of it, and sometimes it's not. I never like I've read the bubbles out of order, starting in this comic book for some reason. Yeah, I have trouble with that sometimes too. It's not really clear who's supposed to be talking first, especially right. if, especially if they're going if they're vertical if, on the vertical axis. If there's like three on top of each other, yeah. It's so hard how to do you tell. know where to start? Do you start from the right and read to the left? Do you start from the left, read to the right? Do you go top to bottom? You're supposed to so, do top to bottom, left to right. Like but, so in that in that like the fourth square where it's the same person talking, you read the first bubble to the right and then the, the bubble on the left and then the bottom bubble of that on the right. The trick yeah, that but, I the trick that I learned it's just you, you just read the bubble of the person that's on the left. Well, the problem is what you just said, Lump. Um, the, this first one is where I started talking about it. The bubble to the left is the first one, and it's the one underneath, the one on the top. I think that's for emphasis that it's loud. Ah, uh, huh. Or that it just fits on the page that way. Yeah, it's that weird. one's weird. I was looking down at the next one, because if you go to the one to the right... You can see Bruce is talking first, even though his bubble's on the right. Right. Oh, so how no. Do you know he's talking first? No, no, you're supposed to read the left first. Yeah, you're supposed to read the person on the left first is what I learned. Even though it's lower. Okay. Wow. Okay. It's weird. That is weird. I, mean, I didn't catch it when I read it, but I, I don't, now looking at it, I did. I don't, know if, f- I don't know if it's for everything, but I, it seems to work a majority of the time. You just read the guy that's on the left. Well, this I'm going to tell you something right now. That... Yeah, you're getting ready to say it, but this this comic has way too many words in it. Maybe that's what it is. This is the first one I had a problem with, and maybe it's because it's got too much dialogue. It's way too much dialogue for a comic. For me, anyway. It's, it's right. too much. I had a hard time reading this one. And I thought it was really good when I got through it, but I it, I had a hard time reading this comic. 
It might as well have been a novel at this point. You might yeah, put this it on one was long. Printed paper. Yeah. These, this is the second one that we're doing in this batch, and this one, the last one, and the next one, they were all felt like they were pretty long. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I like this, but like I was telling Uncle Chris off screen that this is more of the, a detective story. They're telling, there's they're not a lot of action to take up a lot of the panels, so got, yeah. there's going to be a lot more going on with dialogue yeah. bubbles. So, I mean... Anyway, Robin's reading the paper, and he finds out, and he asks Bruce if he knew, if he's read it, and he says yes, but then Bruce, and so Robin says, and Bruce says, yes, we should investigate, and Robin's like, how are we going to do that? So Bruce says, we're going to enroll you in the school with the murderer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to leave you there, and you're going to figure it out yourself, Robin. Uh-huh. I mean, Robin is a superhero. He can handle himself, as long as he doesn't get hit in the back of the head. Yeah, or well, that's great and all until he gets killed, and then it's Batman. Then it's Bruce's fault for letting him <laughs> do all this stuff. Or trips on a lamp, or yes. busts his head, or gets kidnapped by the Joker, or <laughs> more than once. Uh huh. Or gets thrown overboard of a, off a yacht, you know, yeah. out a window into a boat. I think Bruce doesn't really like him. I think he's trying to get rid of him. He's like, let's just keep sending this kid till he gets killed, and I don't have to babysit him anymore. Yeah, he just won't die. I send him yeah. on these terrible missions all the time, and he won't <laughs> go away. He keeps coming back for more. All right, we got a homicidal maniac. Let's send him to this school. Not only is there a homicidal maniac going on, but kids are going missing, too. Right. So, I mean, I guess if Robin goes missing, he's going to find the other kid. Yeah, <laughs> unless he's dead. I mean, he'll find him. <laughs> it's true. He will find him. Anyway, so Bruce and Rob, Bruce and Robin, Bruce and Dick, oh, yeah. Bruce and Dick go into the principal's office and you know enroll Dick in school, and then a new teacher comes in and says, "You're firing me." And then the principal explains, "Well, you gave the rich kid a D or something, and he he pays a lot of money in this school." <laughs> How come? When Batman or Bruce Wayne is having a conversation with somebody, somebody always gets fired or quits when they're, when he's standing there. <laughs> That's another one it's of Batman's gut superpowers. Yep. He makes people get fired? No, he's just in the right place for where all thing detective stuff happens. <laughs> true, true. So, it, it's a superpower. You can add it to the list. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the principal fires a teacher, and it looks like, and Bruce mentions that it looks like Greer has it out for you. That's Red Heron number one, by the way. Yeah. And then we're introduced to the art teacher. Which, there's so many bubbles in that panel, I had no idea where to start, where to finish. <laughs> I was just like, that might have been the first time I fell asleep reading. There's 37 people talking in that one bubble, in that one <laughs> yeah. panel. This is the panel that the left or right doesn't work, because it's the yeah. principal. Principal does talk first, and he's on the left. But then it sounds like it's the art teacher that goes next. I mean, I guess and, you could go from left to right, and it really doesn't matter. Right. Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, no, how do you do? How do you do? Yeah, left to right does still work. Yeah, yeah, it actually works either way. So yeah, so just I'm going to stick to my original plan and just read from left to right from the person. <laughs> okay. Apparently, I'm keep trying that. Appar- it apparently, it works so far. Yeah, so, I'm going to see if it works. Anyway, so th- they talk about the our teacher who's he's got paintings and stuff. He shows them their paintings. Yeah. And then they're introduced to the weird history teacher. No one here likes him. Yeah, he's he's just. He's a good teacher, though. That's why he sticks around. Yeah, but they don't trust him. But, you know, the teacher is, is mean to Bruce, and Bruce goes, Burr, I did Did we get the cold shoulder or what? <laughs> yeah, Bruce ain't used to that. He's, I guess because he's got money, he thinks everybody should be giving him, like, you know, little respect. To be fair, everyone does. Except for that history teacher. I know. I mean, Commissioner Gordon's invites him to crime scenes and stuff. True. That is true. They give him little boys for no reason. I like the school, the lounge room stuff in this comic was cool. Like their the boys' dorm rooms and stuff. We're not there yet. Spoilers. I'm going through. <laughs> anyway, apparently there are policemen all over the place, and Bruce tells Dick to investigate, and Dick's like, "How am I supposed to do that?" And then he says, "Figure it out." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not like that but pretty much pretty much yeah. yeah you're on your own go do it yeah basically you're gonna go to this school so just deal with it that's pretty and he never really gives them any real instruction uh, he nope. just tells them to go he tells them there's stuff to do here figure it out and let me know when you do and again we have, we have a problem with these police who don't even find the kid's diary yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll get yeah, to that. It's terrible. So they're looking for this kid's diary, which I don't even know how they know he had a diary in the first place. But well, apparently... because somebody tells them to look for Ted Spencer's room for his diary. Oh, right, right, right. But then, yeah. the, so the cops can't find it, and so Robin finds out from this other kid 
about you know who the the kid that disappeared was and stuff. So yeah. Robin goes to the room and immediately finds the diary. Yeah, no problem. We're right in and finds it. It had a, it, was in a, it was in a different cover, so all the cops had to do was open a book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It was just but disguised was, as another book. <laughs> they didn't pick up any of his books apparently because it was lying in the pile with the other books. So yeah, they didn't even skim through. Oh, this is interesting. No, it was like nope. Couldn't find. <laughs> can't find the diary. Ah, uh, these are just books. Don't look, don't look over there. We're looking for a book, but don't look at the books. Anyway, so Robin finds the diary, and then a masked man comes in and takes the book. Yeah, he just snatches it right out of his hand. Give me that. Who's <laughs> dressed like Clayface? He is dressed like Clayface. And the one, the first panel where they show him, I thought he had like a bird's beak or something. Yeah, you see that? That's why I said yeah, it it's weird. like, at first I thought it was Clayface, and I'm like, God, oh, they're bringing him back, huh? And then I realized it's not. It's just like, yeah. yeah. So after Clayface snatches the diary, Robin says, you're not the only one that wants that diary, and punches him in the face. <laughs> it says tag, you're it. So Clay, so I almost said Clayface. So this masked guy picks up a chair and breaks it over Robin's head. Yeah. But it doesn't knock him out. It just staggers him. And so this masked man runs out, Robin goes out in the hallway, and loses him, just like every other cop. Yeah, they're going. Oh, yeah, Robin's learning too much from the police. He should be paying attention to Batman instead. Yeah. But this is where we learned that Robin has a telephone in his belt. This is, I, before we got on here, I was going through my notes and I started laughing. For some reason, I wrote, and Robin talks to his penis. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He sits <laughs> down on his bed, does. Yeah. undoes his belt, and talks to his penis. <laughs> he does. And then he gives it to Batman, who also does the same thing. So It's, it's an antenna. It reaches yeah. Batman. His penis is the antenna. <laughs> it goes so, right to Batman. So it's a wireless. And it is. So that Batman has the other one. So here's my question. One, I don't think it really works that way, but we're going to skip the scientificness of all of it. Right. But two, they are definitely short range. So is Batman just out in the courtyard for like days at a time while Robin's in the school just waiting for a phone call? Well, when you go to Batman, he's got his little antenna up on his belt hoop, too, for some reason. And um, he doesn't have his headphones in, but he can talk to Robin, and he's standing by a tree. Well, he is talking down into his belt. He he's talking, talking to his penis, too. Yeah. But so, my point, see, well, I'm just curious, is that if Batman's just sitting in the courtyard waiting for Robin to talk, why doesn't he do a little bit of detective in himself? <laughs> because he's like, I'm tired. Let's let Robin do I'm going to lean against this tree and wait for him to call me. For, like, four days? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's only when Robin puts his, his outfit on that Batman goes there. You ever notice that? Like, Robin's never in his Robin outfit, and Batman's Bruce Wayne. That's true. So, so when one gets changed, the other one automatically turns into the other one. And then they and then shows up near him, apparently. Because, like, when Robin gets thrown off a building, Batman's automatically there. I so, think they got, like, some kind of magnets or something. No, I, I <laughs> think it's more like... When one gets changed, the other one automatically, his, their costume ev evaporates onto them. Oh, but it I just think, comes on. Yeah, but Bruce Wayne was still sitting out there for days out in the courtyard just waiting for it to happen. <laughs> anyway. I'm guessing a lot of it happens at night, though. It almost seems like, like especially in this comic, where Robin's not doing a whole lot of work during the day. It's kind of at nighttime when he's in his Robin suit. So yeah. Batman maybe is waiting around at nighttime. Maybe. Right. But they were both at the school during the day. So right. But not dressed as No, but not dressed as that. So Bruce went outside into the courtyard and waited for Robin to get dressed and call put him. On, and call him. <laughs> put on his costume in the courtyard, waiting for Robin to call. It's his gut. Tell him. Get your suit on. It's time. That's fine. But he was still out in that courtyard for at least six hours. <laughs> anyway. The masked man reads the diary and then throws it into the fire, because... That's what you do. When you're done with a book, you throw it in the fire. <laughs> Is that how it works? Yeah. What, you're going to read it again? No, you throw I... it in the fire. So I had, um, you know, Batman Chronicles Volume 1, it's in the fire. I'm oh, on Volume okay. 2 now. I see. I didn't know that's how you do it. Yeah. Less I mean, you're not going to read it again. <laughs> no, I guess not. Not after you podcast on it, you're not. Right. That's fair. Anyway, so Robin's outside for some reason now. He's looking for Batman. <laughs> what is this? Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's the next night now. Oh, yeah, the next night. Robin is once more on the prowl. Yeah, that's why he's outside searching. And he finds the escape mental patient who tries to kill him. Yeah, yeah he does. He try, he's still got his knife, too. He try, Well, he already killed somebody, right? He killed the janitor, yeah. Yeah, so now, he's, now I know you're a keeper. 
And he killed. Oh, Robin comes upon him killing the another janitor. That's what happened. Yeah, that's what it was. The second janitor. And so the janitor says, "You're one of them too." And the attack tries to attack and kill Robin, but Robin judo flips him and knocks him out. I guess he flips him a couple times. Yep. Yeah, and knocks him out. And then the next day, everyone's all happy because the crime's been solved, right? Nothing. Well, what Robin knocks him out and then runs away, so the cops can find him, right? Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay, and, so then everybody's then, yeah. And the next day, the teachers are all happy. Hey, problem solved. Killer's been found. <laughs> I guess everything's back to normal now. We're good. Nobody yeah. found the kid, though. Nobody worried about the missing kid. <laughs> nope. So, <laughs> apparently, the mental patient was just an escaped mental patient. He was killing janitors because they thought they were uh, staff from the asylum trying to take him back. And he thought Robin was one, too. Right. So, the, he's just a red heron. Right. Yeah, that's pretty much they explain that and then move on to the next part of the mystery. So, like yeah. it's it's basically oh that that was it he was the murderer and then they're done. So yeah, so the history teacher is in his own panel in a circle like a Looney Tunes exit and says yeah. the case is finished. Is it, Mister Blake? You have forgotten about the missing child. Oh so, right, he does mention Ted Spencer. Yeah, but the other two were like, no, nah, the kid's fine. Who cares? <laughs> oh, that's right. There was a kid missing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Robin decides to climb up into the principal's office to find, dun dun dun, the principal's dead. Yep, Blake's and dead. So the co- cops come and they find the dead body and they arrest the teacher that was fired from earlier. Right. You killed them and they're telling them already. You killed Blake, didn't you? Yeah. You they're, hated him because he discharged you from school. Those cops are going to rough this guy up and get a confession. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, that could be end right there. So the confession goes on for a few pages, but Batman and Robin are talking and stuff, but I wanted to bring attention to the side panel. It says, who do you think is the mystery murderer? Who do you think is the the mass menace? Check which person you think it is. And it has a picture of the fired teacher, the principal, Rear. the principal, the art teacher, the creepy history teacher, or the serial killer. Who do you think it was, guys? <laughs> well, listen, well, I, I know it's not the, the principal or the escape mental patient because they're already done. Right, they're both dead. I don't understand. Right. No. The mental patient. The mental was patient gone. was just the mental patient was just arrested. It doesn't mean he couldn't have kidnapped the kid or the day before. I, I guess. I guess the kid could be hidden off somewhere. Yeah, dead, but, but they're not saying they're not asking who who kidnapped the kid. They want to know who the murderer is. And the murderer can't be Blake because he's the one that's dead. And right. The escape patient is arrested. He was arrested before the guy was dead. Before well, Blake was killed. Knows. It's also asking who you think the mask menace is, though. Okay. I, I picked the history teacher when I was going through it. Yeah? Did you pick yeah. one lump? I picked the history teacher, too. Did you? I, I initially yeah. picked the history teacher, but then I thought about it. I was like, no, it's the <laughs> art teacher. I've seen every Scooby-Doo, teacher, or Scooby-Doo movie ever. I, was, I think I think you 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 said it wrong. You meant to say you picked the history teacher, then you finished the comic and said, "Oh yeah, I remember it's the art teacher." I knew it was the art <laughs> teacher. No, no, I literally I because I went down two panels to the end of the page and I went back up and it's like, "No, the history teacher's too easy. It's got to be the art teacher." Well, the thing is, they they haven't really mentioned the art teacher again. Like he says a couple things, but he don't get questioned right. or not he's the only one that's not suspicious right now that's why i i double right. thought it and i was like wait no it's gotta be that they are teacher because everyone else is so obvious yeah. well and now i don't know why i picked the history teacher because after we just went through the last page where the history teacher is actually the one who brings up the kidnapped kid <laughs> true, why would true. he have done that if he did it? but i guess i didn't catch that when i first read that comic because i did pick the <laughs> history teacher right and like I said, he was my first choice too. But then yeah. I got down three panels. It's like, no, that's wrong. It's got to be the art teacher because nothing else makes sense. Because it's obviously not the guys the cops are interrogating, or else the comic right. would be over. Yeah, See, and I, think I thought I d- the same thing. It couldn't be Greer. I think I just didn't like that history teacher because he gave Batman a cold shoulder earlier. So <laughs> that's yeah. possible. <laughs> he's guilty anyway. To be fair, yeah, he gave. To be fair, he gave it to Bruce Wayne, not Batman. True. 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 And Bruce Wayne's kind of a dick. <laughs> he just has money. Rich people are are dicks. Oh, sometimes. we find out in the next issue he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> we do. You're right. Anyway, Robin discovers a shadow and follows the masked man through a secret passage tunnel behind the blackboard. Yeah, the blackboard slides away. Yeah, through a secret passage behind a school in one of the schools, back outside to a house 
down the road, I guess? <laughs> now, when they got to this house down the road and they showed all the people in there, I thought that was all the teachers. I thought everybody was in on it. I'm like, oh, so I did I. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah, when I first looked, I'm like, wait, wait, there are the teachers. Why are all the teachers in this house? What, yep, what's that's going what I on? Thought too. I thought I guessed, and I thought I would guess right because I thought everybody was in on it. No, I didn't get that at all, honestly. <laughs> I did. When I, I did the same thing you did, Uncle Chris. I'm like, that's why all the te- it's a teacher's lounge? Why is there a kid tied up in the teacher's lounge? Right. Then I realized it was a house down the street. Yeah, no. It, they're, they're gangsters. They were all, apparently, what is it, counterfeit money? Is that what's going on here? Yes. Yeah, well, that's, well, I, we didn't get to it yet when we find out who it is. But go ahead. The other counterfeit money. So these, because these, so these gangsters counterfeited money, and the masked man says, "All right, we can kill the kid now because we don't need him anymore." And they go to stab the kid, and then Robin busts through the door and saves the day, like an avalanche. Yep. And then they're all about to kick Robin's ass, and then Batman shows up, and one guy says, "Let me, let me out of here. That guy's dynamite." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Help! The joint's been hit by a tornado. So then Batman, <laughs> Batman and Robin get into a fight with all these guys. The masked guy tries to escape, and Robin throw uses his mighty slingshot to knock him down. Hey, yeah, wax him in the back of the head. Hey, Robin's a good shot with that thing. Yeah, he is. He looks Batman. a little chunky in that in that panel too, where he's swinging. But he looks a little chubby. He does. Actually, he looks more like he's a, a small person. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, he does. He looks. He's like a little little stocky. Yeah, like you know, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm not. And then the next panel, he's like lanky. Yeah, and muscly when he's throwing it. Yeah. So Batman picks up the masked person, and I'll mask him, and dun-dun-dun, it's the art teacher. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, now that we know who it is, that is a bad, like, the only reason it was the art teacher is because he's good at art, so he can knows how to make money, knows how to engrave to make money. Well, so here's the thing. The principal is the one that kidnapped the kid. They were in on it together. But the principal was screwing up, so the art teacher killed him. Gotcha, okay. So they were in cahoots, and so, yeah, and there was a counterfeit ring, so there you have it. They solved another case. Yeah, and uh, Bru- uh, Dick wants to know how he did. Well, Bruce, how did I do on this case, okay? And he says, all I've got to say is, you're as terrific as your, what's that say? <laughs> as you are as a kid. I pity, if you're as terrific as you are as a kid, I pity the criminals when you're a grown man. Fair. Yeah. Robin, the Expe- original I- Boy Wonder will be back next month in Detective Comics. Not to, Batman, just Robin. To thrill you again in another exciting and fast-moving adventure with the Batman at the end. But yeah, I we I know what Dick Grayson grows up to be, so he's Bruce is not wrong about that last statement. No, no, yeah. I, I think I might <laughs> even like uh, him better than, you know, than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, our appearances were Batman, Robin, Mr. Blake, which says first and only appearance to date. These all say first and only appearance to date. Mr. Blake, Mr. Graves, Ted Spencer, Greer, and Hodges. Well, it's, to be fair, Detective Comics is still going, so they could bring back those characters if they wanted right. to. Yeah, so I guess it is to date. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, Gad. Oh, no, that's it. Mr. Blake, Mr. Graves, Ted Spencer, Greer, and Hodges. No weapons or... No, it just says location, Gotham City. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that one was a little lamer. Yeah. I, I'm i not kidding you. I fell asleep three times trying to read that one. It felt like you were reading, like, one of those kid detective books, like Nancy Drew and or Hardy Boys or something. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it did kind of feel that way. It, it gave you one of those panels. Which one do you think it is? <laughs> so I don't know anything. I got, it wrong, it? So. I got it wrong too, but so we all got it wrong. But you know, anyway, anything else to say about that one? No, I'm good. All right, then I guess it's joke time, Uncle Chris. Oh my god, the best part of the whole episode. Here we go. You ready for this one? You thought last week's one was good? It depends on the. Better. It depends on the joke. <laughs> <laughs> you think last week's one was good? You ready for this one? What do you get when you combine Robin with a Vitamix? I don't even know what a Vitamix is. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. You get Robin the Boy Blender. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Last week was so good. I told, you they were thinking, I told you they only get better from there, didn't I? Yeah, that one's <sighs> bad. That one's really bad. Uh, you might need to edit that one out. <laughs> uh, nope. Good 
Goodbye. <laughs> See you.